everybody. Edo here, and I have Seth Johnson here with me. Say hello, Seth. Hey, everybody. So this is a fun one. We are going to do a new top 10 uh, list for the end of the year, and this is top 10 kids games of 2018. And as a reminder, these are games that have been reviewed by me within 2018, not necessarily from 2018. And and for me, I, I didn't do any reviews, but I have a four-year-old that I'm kind of edging into playing games with me, so these are kind of some of the, my favorite ones I played with her during 2018. And, and actually, that that's a, a, a great note. My kids this year were seven and eight, set, well, okay, eight and ten, but also seven and nine. Uh, over the course of the year. Um, but um, so these are top 10 games and for kids. And if you are watching this when I am releasing it, the Gaming with Edo Season 5, 5 Kickstarter is live and any all support is most appreciated. Check it out. Been doing lots and lots and lots of content this year. Um, want to do more next year. I mean, I'm going to do it anyway, but the support is helpful. Just like this nice camera that is making for... I, I backed it and made him play Situation 4 finally. So. Yes. So, yep, yep, yep. And that was... And you get to pick content and all sorts of fun things. Um, but let's get to the list. Sure. So for top 10 kids games, number 10 uh, is a game called Chicka Pig. It's for chicken pigs. Chicka Pig. <laughs> and uh, it's a really interesting one because I got reached out to by a uh, PR agent for the designer because I guess he's in the film industry and like worked with Dave Matthews and they, they're on the back of the box, whatever. It's a uh, made in the USA, uh, interesting game that's like a combination of Ricochet Robot and maybe Checkers or something. Mm -hmm. But basically you have the board, you're on different sides and you're trying to get your chicken pigs, like chicken pig things out the other side. And uh, essentially you're doing, you're, you're rolling a die to find out how many moves you get and you basically can go as far as you can and you have to like bounce around and get through it. But there's like cows and they're pooping and it's simple. It's like... And that's pooping it. How can kids not work? Yeah, it's like, you know, a step above a rolling move, but it worked. The kids enjoyed it. They had fun. We had fun. Yeah. Has a few things where I was like, boy, this game would be better if I wasn't rolling a D6, but rolling like a... A D6, but with, you know, ha like half the sides, like one, two, three, one, two, three, because mm -hmm. that, you know, three sixes over there versus three ones makes her one unhappy kid. Um, but, you know, I'm sure they'll get that in the uh, expansion. Well, something similar that, that is big right now that we're playing a lot of is a Haba game called Dragon Rapid Fire, which is kind of, yeah. Um, it, uh, it actually is um, similar roll and write. But you roll and you're moving down a path to collect crystals. So there may be three crystals a few steps down the path. And then when you reach a juncture, uh, you can go through and the juncture kind of swaps. So the next person goes the other way. Oh, sure. And there, there's just enough little choices that you're making to try and pick up crystals that it, it elevates it that one notch above being a simple roll and write. And it's, uh, you know, when, when you're still teaching kids those basic mechanics of, okay, roll, count that certain number of spaces, and make some simple choices. It, it's a really great game that, that she really has fun with and I really love. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so number nine it, on my list is Tofu Kingdom by Blue Orange Game. This is a social deduction game featuring tofu and other vegetables, but basically not, uh, anamorphic in the prince and princess and in like a royal court. And basically you're the just lying about identities and it's like a stand it's pretty standard um hidden hidden character game but you know it's cute it's light it's simple everything's sort of humorous the ability is really easy to understand so it's just like for, for kids and family mm -hmm. uh and it's always interesting as a parent to watch your children lie and try to lie and sort of <laughs> gauge where their liarship is uh, it proves to be useful in other situations. So <laughs> I highly learn their tells. Yeah, I highly recommend Tofu Kingdom. Um, well, uh, one that's actually not on my list here, but I just remembered um, when you're talking about uh, kids learning deduction, things like that, there's a great game out called Logic Land, which is um, the, the thing that's really cool about it is it is a series of logic puzzles for kids where the box is a tin with a picture of a castle on the inside, and you get uh, magnetic figures of dragon, wizard, king, princess, and each puzzle gives you just enough clues to try and figure out where the characters are in the castle. They start super simple and get very, very hard very, very quick. And so it's kind of a fun little game to teach kids basic deduction and logic. Cool. And, and it's got magnets. 
So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, that's that's why one of the reasons she loves it a lot. It's got a high toy factor. Um, so my number eight is a game called Nut Job. It was actually a Kickstarter, but I think it was a remake of a previous game. Um, but Nut Job is just this fantastic take on memory. But instead of just cards face down, they're double sided. So you uh, are trying to be able to. It's, it's a three by three grid. You're trying to be able to call out the underside of a row or column. But every time you take an at attempt, they flip. So you're you're trying to remember, but they're like similar objects. They're like three different objects in three different mm -hmm. colors. So it becomes really hard, and you're like it just breaks your brain a little bit. So it's not like memory with a ton of tiles. It's very compact, but mm -hmm. it just works. Kids liked it. I liked it. Um, I was super impressed with it. That's good to hear. I actually have it sitting in our to play pile right now. So. Yeah. It, no. It it, it it absolutely delivers. Mm -hmm. Uh. Let's see. Um. The next uh, kind of group of games I was going to talk about uh, that, that she's gotten into lately is dexterity games. You know, um, kids, basically what they're learning to do when they're, when they're young is dexterity. You know, how to move without falling over and how to pick up things and, and they, stack And they blocks. struggle so much. <laughs> well, when they're young especially. Uh, so one of the first games she got into, although we're not playing by the full rules, is Junk Art. Okay. By Pretzel Games. Sure, sure. Um, and similarly, uh, Flick 'em Up, which has high toy factor, though she's not very good at the flicking. She, she loves kind of... Playing through some of the toy factor of it. Awesome. Uh, and then also um, Cube Quest, which is an old game. I don't know if you've played it. The one where you're shooting them across? Yeah, you have a, basically it comes with a neoprene map. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, the, yeah, the field yeah. of battle, and yeah, you're yeah. throwing cubes across. And well, I, I have to do a lot of the resolution. catapults without cross or catapults. Yep, I, I have to do a lot of the resolution for it, but she, she loves rolling the dice across and, and figuring out, and we find out what happens together. So. Did you ever play, um, this was a Kickstarter game from last year, was it Mars Open? Did you play Mars Open? Yeah, there? yeah I played, not with her, but I played yeah, it, uh, yeah, with yeah. you actually, I think. Yeah, so that, that was another fun mm -hmm. one. Yeah, Maybe yeah. We'll step up. So uh, my number seven, I don't think you've played this, uh, it's actually sitting over there, uh, Troll Park, T-R-O-O-L Park, by uh, Akama Games, An 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 Ankama, so Ankama, Ankama, Ankama. Um, they do a lot of the uh, uh, Crossmaster stuff. Mm -hmm. Really incredible production value and look feel of it. But really simple. Not, okay, it's a middleweight for family game. You know, it's got some complexity. But basically, everyone's making their own theme park. And there's a set of rides in the middle. And what you're doing is you're all, essentially, you have these little, like, fun dials. Like, all the components are great. Where you're just basically saying what you're going to go for, and you flip more, you turn them, and like I'm going for this, and you get the you get the little ride, and you can put it into your 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 area, your own little park. Mm -hmm. There's like a competition and a slide for who wins and ties, and then essentially what you're trying to do is just like have different sections of your park leveled up in different ways, and you move up tracks, and you've got weather, and it's just a fun, nice game, easy to teach and explain and play. Mm -hmm. um, very impressed and a really nice. Wait, there's some. Um, Bad choices they made on the sizing of some elements and the balancing of elements. So like this track is a little hard. So there's a couple quibbles in terms of like it being um, just a little fidgety. Fig fidgety? Fidgety. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but really enjoyed it. We all had fun. Cool. Troll Park. Uh, let's see. Um, talking about dexterity games. Uh, one we played early on was actually um, another Haba game. A, a number of those in there just they make such great kids games. And that was Dancing Eggs. You ever played Dancing Eggs? I've heard of it. I haven't played it. The game comes in effectively an egg card because what's inside are various eggs. Dancing? Well, they will be eventually. Some are wooden, but there are a couple rubber eggs. And so sometimes you're keeping the the, the egg under your arm. Sometimes oh, you keep it under your oh, chin. Yeah, 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 and yeah, if you yeah, drop the rubber egg... Bounces around and goes dancing. So, no, I, ha I have played that. I have yeah. played that. Yeah, it's 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 a fun game to play with little kids, but I bet it would be equally fun as a party game. Yeah, yeah, with some drinks. Um, the uh, that little moment of mental uh, detachment I had while he was going through that is I realized I had missed something in my list. So we just hot fixed the list while All he right. was talking. Uh, so. Number uh, seven. So number six for me was another Kickstarter that's not released yet, but it was Jetpack Joyride by Lucky Duck Games. Um, I felt it was just a fabulous execution of um, the IP. Mm -hmm. It's it's fast and quick, and you're basically everyone's trying to get 
the Jetpack Joe or whatever his name is through Barry. this Barry, Jetpack Barry. Barry. Barry Steak Fries. Barry Steak Fries. And you, and you, <laughs> I know, I believe you. And uh, you're laying down like te, uh, tentrom, ten, tetrominoes. Tetrominoes to uh, get him through like his flight path, basically. Mm -hmm. um, it plays quick, fun. Everyone can get in and uh, hit with just like a variety of kids who played it. And I, I, there are even, uh, if, if you don't want to play with your kids, there are solo play rules coming. Awesome. Did so, you make them? No, no. I, I, I helped with proofreading those rules uh -huh. a little bit, but, but they are on the way. Uh, let's see. Um, another one that is a, a super fun game uh, that uh, I brought along recently to a family get-together, uh, because not only could my daughter play it, but people who are non-gamers really get into it, and that is Suro. Uh, you know, it's not a, anyone who's listening to this channel probably knows Suro. Uh, I think Clive, you just announced to come out with a new version of it next year. That might be kind of up a notch or two for gamers. But the classic game is is just a really perfect little game of setting it out and having uh, rocks go down the path. You know, I don't, I don't, I haven't done a uh, list in a while. I think I did a like top ten games to bring to like a game day or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely one of them. I think that Suro should be in every permanent collection it is just fabulous it's super easy to explain play dive into every time it takes up to eight players yeah and plays quickly it's sort of like you know uh i gotta put it next to magic maze in a way um and it, it's gorgeous now i will say i am not a fan of the current sequel expansion like sir of the seas though. sir of the seas one it's like the ships and the dragons. Yeah, it, it was just sort of like you take me away from the simplicity, and you've added mm -hmm. all these mechanics. I don't want any of them. So I'd be curious how. Well, they've just announced the name. I think it's a uh, Suro Phoenix Rising, mm -hmm. and it's both uh, kind of an anniversary edition for Calliope Games, who's the current publisher of it. Um, I, I don't know if they've announced much of the rules, but I'll, I'll be curious to see. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you can polish up a classic, or you could actually wreck it. But you I, I, I have faith in those guys. I, I know them very well, and I, I bet they'll do well by the game. Cool. So we are at the top five. I want to make sure this video doesn't cut off on us, so I'm going to actually click it. And we're back for the top ten kids game of kids games of 2018. And these again are games that were reviewed in 2018, not necessarily from it. And um, next on my list, number five is Doctor Beaker. Doctor Beaker is one of games from the Doctor Eureka. Mm -hmm. uh, series, and there was also Dr. Petrie, perhaps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I thought about both, and I ended up going with Beaker because I thought it was a little bit more tactile. Dr. Eureka was a top game last in, in last year's list, or maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. where you're like the test moving yep. balls through test tubes, and Dr. Beaker, you're doing like, you have a beaker with like a pin, you're moving balls around like, in a or circle. chopsticks? Well, it's just one. You're, yeah, yeah, okay, yes, you're Petri right. Petrie yeah. is the chopsticks. Mm -hmm. That one's a little bit more like set. It's a little bit more complex, but I like the physicality of Beaker. Mm -hmm. All of those games are fantastic yeah. uh, and always a pleaser with the children. Um, what's next on your list? Uh, let's see. Next on my list, and, and I'm talking not necessarily about games I review because I don't review games except when I'm sitting here with you, you could, but yeah. games I've been playing with uh, with my for soon to be five year old daughter uh, that she's loved and that we've loved playing together is Rhino Hero. Oh sure, sure. Which now classic game, even though it's only a few years old. Uh, really fun game of card stacking and building a tower. And I feel like they just released or announced a variant, a new version of this game. Uh, like they, Rhino, they put out the giant card version. Yeah, but then they, I think they released one with new rules or something recently. That sounds familiar. I'll have to yeah. see. I'll have to track it down. I don't know if it came out or I just read it somewhere. Um, he's making a note. All right, so next up, and this is an odd one. This was like one of the first reviews of the year, early, early on. And actually, I had, I was supposed to review it the previous year, and like, I thought I did, and then I was talking to the guy who sent it to me, and he was like, man, you never reviewed it. And I was like, I didn't. And I had reviewed it, I just hadn't published it. So I don't know. It's a you have to click the button. I want to include it though, and it's ice cool. Uh, if you haven't played ice cool, you're flicking dexterity around mm -hmm. uh, little penguins. Uh, they've got like ball bearings inside of them, so they got that wobble thing going on, and you can like bank them around corners. It is fantastic. Ice cool tool came. Ice cool two came out this year, um, but I think Brandon doesn't work there anymore, so <laughs> I didn't get a copy. But either way, highly recommended. Tons of fun flicking penguins. Awesome. Uh, another category of games, uh, just to run down a quick little sub list that I'm trying to get my daughter into now, is uh, press your luck games. Understanding kind of how basic 
dice rolling works. Um, and we're starting with Zombie Dice. It's from Steve Jackson Games, kind of a classic game of, you know, are you going to keep rolling and try to collect brains and, and risk, you know, getting shotgunned, although we call it exploded. Um, and she loves that, but, uh, you know, coming down the hill, eventually I'd like to get her to roll for it. Uh, another good Calliope game, although that's a little abstract since it's just numbers and points. She can't quite grasp it. Uh, a game that I want to play soon that I think she might get a little more is another Haba game that uh, I can't remember if it came out this year or late last year called uh, King of the Dice. Uh, it, it's actually a fun little press your luck. Um, there's a little bit of like uh, I'm trying to bring these villagers into my village and build up my, my kingdom and it, it's a very fun little game that, that's a nice intro to press your luck mechanics. And eventually I'll get her up to playing like King of New York and Can't Stop, but slowly down that road. Yeah, you know, um, thinking about that, I have a game, I haven't reviewed it, but going to be reviewing it shortly, called The Legend of the Cherry Tree that blossoms every hundred years uh, by Yellow. Uh, it's a really simple push your luck game where you're pulling flowers out of a bag and you just, if you get like three of the same color or five different colors, you bust. Mm -hmm. And you're collecting for some set collection. Set collection is a little, but so that that that's a fun one. And but also herbaceous sprouts. Yeah, yeah, that could be one. Um, it occurred to me that we may have been getting the numbering wrong since we've been back on, simply because I had made that hot change, and I may have said it. So just to clarify, for those keeping track, Doctor Beaker would be number five. Ice Cool would be number four, and coming into number three uh, is Ticket to Ride New York. Uh, if you haven't played Ticket to Ride New York and you are a Ticket to Ride fan, play it. As far as I'm concerned, it's the definitive Ticket to Ride. It's 20 minutes. You get the fun without the other 20 minutes. And I liked it a ton. I mean, I, I like all Ticket to Ride. But well, I, another one that came out this year was uh, Ticket to Ride First Journey. For, okay, so there are a lot of similarities between the two. Yeah. But... Like, Ticket to Ride First Journey, and I like Ticket to Ride First Journey. And and when I played it, I was like, oh, I'm surprised they haven't moved some of these things into the other Ticket to Ride, because I like it. It's like sort of cued it, cued it up or down, or however you want to think about mm -hmm. it. Uh, and I felt like the same thing was accomplished in Ticket to Ride New York, but not uh, as much as like my first game style. But they're, they actually both would work. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to check it out. I, I, I love Ticket to Ride in, in almost every flavor. So I, I, I think that may be one of the few I don't have. So yeah, well, it, it it, it's uh, in the permanent collection, so if you just bug me... Like, you no, know. no, no, I'll have one for my own permanent collection. Uh, his, need yours. By the way, I should do a, like, travel vlog of his collection, because he's got those, like, book, you know, <laughs> library, bookshelf, wall of games. It's pretty good. We can we could just like go through and explain the games, but anyway, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I I only have kind of one little subcategory left, uh, and that is um, questing games. Okay. That I'm trying to get her into, uh, you know, kind of you know fantasy adventure type games. Um, uh, uh, and on the list of ones I'll be trying very soon, um, possibly Talisman. I know Talisman is one of those games that that people love or hate, but it's it's really good for kind of that roll dice and have adventure happen. Um, there is the version that came, or not version, but uh, tie, it's tied in game that came out this year called Talisman Legendary Tales. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to play it yet. It's kind of a, a I mean, I've played Talisman. So Talisman Legendary Tales is kind of a boiled down but very different game in that you each play a character and you're moving through an environment trying to accomplish the, the quest together by reaching into your bag and drawing out tokens. Okay. So if you want to defeat the troll that's in this square, you have to, if is they it say a, you is need it two a bag swords. Builder? Yeah, okay. yeah, where you're putting tokens into your bag and then drawing tokens out, and it, 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 it's a lot of fun. And um, the last one that I have on, the, on my list in that category is Adventureland, which I think is a game I played with you at least yes. once. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Tom Vassell loves that game. I, I also love that game. I like that game. Um, uh, very Cool has a bunch, of, it's a game where all your pieces start at the top left corner of the board, and when all your pieces reach the bottom right, you're out. Yeah. But it's kind of what you do and strategically how you move through the environment um, is how many points you score along the way. And, and you learn coordinates. You do, and it's it's got a number of different scenarios that are in there. Um, and then I just discovered uh, at Gen Con last year that there is an expansion that came out called King and Princess that puts in a few new scenarios. So I'm, I'm super excited to play through that. Awesome. It's 
It's a very good game. Mm -hmm. Some people love it. Um, number two is a game by the name of Tales of Glory. Tales of Glory is another game you've never heard of, but it's by Uncama as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and it blew my mind. Uh, this was, I think the review for this is probably, like, if it's not out during the time of this video, it's like coming in the next couple of days. This was a game I played like a week or two ago, so it's late in, and, uh, you are adventurers, but what's happening is there's like a tableau of tiles, and then we have our adventure and we're building our own maps, and we're basically, um, sort of, it's actually <laughs> some similarities to True Park, but we have a deck of like one through eight, and we're saying, hey, we want that tile. And if we get the same, we fight over it. But if we don't, we take it in. And we're building routes and connecting paths and adding, getting like keys to unlock treasures. And you're like doing set collection with the thing in front of you. And I thought it was awesome. I well, cool. really liked it. And it's extremely well produced and done. And it, it's awesome. Cool. Uh, I guess I, I, I lied. I do have one more game on my oh, list. Of course you do. It, it's uh, one we, we already talked about in our other video, but I'm going to talk about it again now. Depending on whether or not that video come out, came out first or not, but we will or, see. Or maybe you're sitting here watching through all of Ed's videos every week like you should be. Dude, I do that every week. Okay. Um, and that is the new release of Fireball Island from Restoration <laughs> Games. Um, you know, part I'm not going to take my daughter through all the games I've ever played, but you know, definitely kind of those really fun Toyetic kind of games that, that we played when we were kids. Toyetic, a word? Toyetic, yeah. Toyetic. 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 Yeah. Spell it? T O Y E T I C. Toyetic. Huh. It's like mousetrap. Like, no, no, it? I get it. I get it. Okay. Uh, toy in nature. Toy yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it has a great physicality about it, and that the board comes together, has the volcano Volcar at the top of the island, and you drop the marbles through, and they go plink, 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 plink through it, and potentially knock over your pieces, and it, it's just a lot of fun, and Restoration Games has made a really good version of it um, that has a lot of fun little mechanics you can engage. Um, uh, she and I have played the base game a couple times now, and you know it, she, it, it's simple enough that she is actually engaging mechanics like and actually scoring points and everything for the most part. Uh, and then when she's ready, there are several expansions we can roll in. Awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm very curious uh, to play it as well. Next time we hang out at your place, we should. Absolutely. Number one on the list for this year is uh, Trekking the National Parks. Uh, I think it's up there somewhere. Or I've, been, I've been hearing a lot about this oh, game. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Scott Caputo, I think, borrowed it from me, or somebody borrowed it from me. Um, so it's, it's in the collection, just not here right now. The traveling um, collection. You know, I mean, in some ways, it's a variant of Ticket to Ride. You're on a map of the United States. You're drawing cards similar to how you do in Ticket to Ride. But in addition to just sort of pathing around, you're going to na national parks and you're using your cards to set, collect, to score points. It has a really nice feel. It's easy to learn. The second edition components are really great. But it has that extra national parks. They have text about, like, different, the gorgeous photos of the parks and like, you know, little, little paragraph details on it. And it just, it's got that great connection or co collection. It's like both fun and educational, but a really satisfying way. And like of all the games we played, like my youngest, just like, you know, something that's great about Ticket to Ride and about uh, Trekking the National Park is just like when the goal is so present to your kid, like a lot of these games you end up playing like the wind condition or what the, what how you go about it is a little opaque to a mm -hmm. younger kid. That's what mm -hmm. they, they don't quite get and they can like sort of go through the motions, but. They're very focused on the churn, not yeah. on the game. Yeah. But Evan had it, man. He was like, he had his moves planned out. He knew what he was going. He knew what parks he wanted to be at. Uh, we had a blast. So I, I, I really think that's an awesome, awesome game. Well, that's cool. Did you have any others? Nope, that, that's it for me. Well, that brings us to the end of the top 10 2018 kids games that were reviewed. And uh, also as a reminder, the Gaming with Edo Season 5 Kickstarter is live. If you like this video or others or whatever, very much appreciate the support. And if there's some great kids games you think we should play or try, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments what was big on your list. That would be awesome. So more uh, Kickstarter videos to come and kids games videos. See ya. Hey everybody, Edo here and 
Thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks. Bye.